Hey everyone, this is Saad. So today uh, we're gonna start an interesting series of topics. Um, I don't know how many, but let's start. So I just prepared today for the uh, for the chapter number one. Um, do some preparation for the chapter number one, and I call it like introduction and lab preparation. And the series is about like MECM. So. Uh, in, so the checklist I prepared so far, it's, it's there are about to be 16 courses, uh, but they can, um, there could be some plus minus throughout the, uh, throughout the lab and throughout the video making. Um, we can merge some topics and reduce some amount of uh, courses. Uh, for example, two courses into one course, things like that, or it can go over 16. Um, so the very first course today is uh, the introduction and, and lab preparations. Um, so this series is, so just let's just spend a few seconds. What is this, this series is about? So this series is for those who are interested in learning the modern workplace technology, for example, endpoint mobility and endpoint uh, and device management. Uh, this is a perfect series for those people. Um, I will try to uh, start from the very basic and from the very scratch. So we go step by step and uh, we explore each topic and go deeper into each topic. Um, I decided to start from the on-premises technologies, that is MECM, and we're gonna um, enable co-management, and then we'll head out to the uh, Azure Active Directory side of things, and then we'll enable cloud management gateway, and then finally we wanna jump, we will jump into on in in, in Microsoft Intune. So. We will explore from on-premises to the cloud. Everything comes in between. Okay, so um, today is just a lab and introduction and the preparation uh, related topic. So making sure that you guys have a uh, you guys have a lab set up and ready for the upcoming uh, sessions. All right. So the checklist for today <clears throat> is prerequisite knowledge uh, to set the expectations that you have the baseline knowledge um, before we implement uh, uh, the products like MECM or Intune. Um, high level overview of MECM, uh, build your own lab, uh, go through my lab and discuss the PKI templates. Um, I wanted to create a separate session on the PKI, but I decided not to do it because it's gonna make unnecessary uh, longer to my series. So I, I just added this PKI templates in my lab session here. Um, so explore uh, prerequisite knowledge. So before we implement or enable anything, um, I want you to make sure that you are familiar with few items. One is server or system administration in general. For example, when we talk about handling Windows servers, uh, playing with virtualization, virtualization technology, in this case, I will be using Hyper-V. Um, when we talk about Hyper-V, some of the components of Hyper-V as well, for example, like virtual networking, virtual switch managers, IP, subnets, DNS, firewalls, storage, uh, Windows patching, uh, just the basic patching. For example, when you install MECM or some other softwares, we recommend that um, the server must be up to date with the latest patches, things like that. So, um, and most importantly, uh, I will not discuss the Active Directory installation and configuration in my series. Uh, this series is focused on uh, MECM and Intune solely. So uh, if you are not familiar with Active Directory, um, this is the time you can 
watch some videos or YouTube, install your local domain, uh, make sure you have some hierarchy set up in your Active Directory, for example, like users, groups, um, uh, some dummy accounts exist. And the next thing is once you have the Active Directory DNS in place, the next important thing is the Azure AD Connect. So Azure AD Connect is basically a sync engine between uh, your on-premises and, and the cloud. In, in this case, it will be Azure Active Directory. So basically it syncs your on-premises objects over to the cloud, even though we do not need the Azure AD Connect right away, but down the line, we will need Azure AD Connect in our series. Okay, so, um, and another important piece is familiarity with certificates and ADCS. So um, I recommend you to get familiar with Active Directory Certificate Services as well, even though we're not gonna go extremely deeper into this, but uh, to the point where you should know how to create um, PKI templates and how to publish them. Uh, I will share the settings for each template and um, I will explain you how to create those templates in this session today. Um, so you can have those four templates ready ahead of time for MECM installation. All right. And it, it's a bonus if you are familiar with PowerShell. So we will be using some PowerShell down the line as well to automate things. And uh, this is the time to sign up for Azure uh, EMS tenant if you don't have already. Um, so minimum licensing we are looking for this course is uh, the P1, Azure AD Premium P1 and uh, our Microsoft Intune license. Um, if you, I, I believe you can sign up for the trial for EMS E5 or M365. So both are fine for this as long as you have uh, rich features enabled in Azure Active Directory along with Microsoft Intune, you should be good to go. Okay, so um, those are the prerequisites knowledge. I assume you already have it. If not, uh, just brush up your skills, watch some videos over YouTube or TechNet articles. So scalability. So um, I wanted to uh, discuss about scalability for MECM since we haven't touched the environment yet. So this is the best time to discuss the scalability because generally the scalability discuss before installation. So you actually design your SCCM or MECM accordingly. So I have official document here as well. Let me bring it up on my screen here. So these points captured from the TechNet document uh, is just easy to um, read in one place. So let me go over a second here. Okay, so for example, each primary site can have up to 250 secondary sites. So before we actually discuss the primary, secondary, blah, 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 let me make a quick uh, diagram to show you how this hierarchy works. Just a very high level, don't expect me to go through the video right now, but just to give you a concept real quick. Second. All right, so so the top hierarchy in previous version that we're gonna work in the 2103, which is a baseline version, and then we're gonna upgrade into it. So we're gonna, let me start. So we're gonna start with 2103. That's called the baseline version of SCCM. And then we're gonna go on 2107. That's an, that's a, that's, you can say like service back. And then finally, we will upgrade onto the latest one, which is 2111, okay? But if you're still on older versions and you wanted to get the concept of 
from the root to all the way to the child side. So here is how it works. So the tops management administrative site is always CAS. It's an abbreviation of central administration site. And the purpose of central administration site is to manage more than one primary site. So if you have more than one or two primary sites, so you can have a central administration site on top of it. So for example, one central administration, let's say like um, can have about uh, 25 primary sites bullet point number three so you can have 25 primary sites so that's a primary one primary two and so on and each primary site can have about 250 secondary site not about around uh, exact 250 secondary site so so this is how the hierarchy works. So this is the last level of this of this hierarchy. There is no child for the secondary sites. So that's why it is very important to discuss the design before you spinning up the servers, uh, deploying MPs, DPs across the regions or across the subnets. You make sure you have the proper design in place. And how you design this primary and secondary sites, uh, there are two uh, I mean, there are two main reasons you dis you discuss the design infrastructure ahead of time. The one is for scalability, um, or and the high availability. That's one thing, and second thing is for to assist the number of clients because essentially you have a limit to each site. For example, um, uh, the second the MP can support up to two hundred twenty five thousand clients. Um, and if you have multiple offices on different geographies, you make sure that you don't have more than 25 primary sites that's under one CAS site, and you don't have more than 250 secondary site under one primary site. So that's one reason you design this hierarchy to, to, to address the scalability, right? Uh, ahead of time before you apply any uh, thing. Second, second thing is for uh, to make sure you are hitting the numbers. For example, one MP can support 25,000 clients. For example, if you have like 40,000 clients in, in Dallas office, then you need more than one MPs over there. That could also provide you the high availability as well. So let me just quickly hop back on to the um, official TechNet article. Let's just spend a few minutes here. So each primary site support 250 sites. Okay, so this is the point I was talking about. Secondary site does not support any child sites. So you make sure that's the full stop over there. And site system roles. Um, so CMG, we're not going to discuss the CMG right now, but when we get to the CMG, I'll discuss it. But think about CMG is like the DP sitting on Azure cloud to assist your internet based clients. So there is a separate configuration required to make sure your VMs are running in Azure, all that kind of good stuff. Okay, so, um, so let's just spend a few seconds here on CMG. So um, you can install multiple instances of the CMG at primary size or the central administration site. Okay. And one CMG support up to 16 virtual machine instances in the Azure cloud services. For example, if you're expecting your traffic to be very high, for example, you have more and more clients on the internet and not reaching out on the, on the local AN network. So you make sure that you have a powerful CM, powerful machines running behind your CMG. Uh, simultaneous client connection per each CMG instance depend upon the deployment model and the VM size. So classic is around like 6,000 clients can simultaneously uh, reach out to the CMG. Uh, in, the latest, in the later versions of MECM, it offers the virtual machine skill sets. So if you're not familiar with virtual machine skill set, that's, that's basically like multiple VMs behind the same service. 
it's more of a type of like a load balancer type of a concept. So, so you have the high availability over there. Okay, so where version 2107 or later offers the VM skill set. And this, if you are working in your lab environment, B2S is the perfect VM that charges less. Uh, standard is A2V2 and the large is A4V2. And you can see the supportability of the client. So that can bear at least 10 concurrent connection. This is 6,000 and the large is 10,000. Okay, all right. I'm not gonna go into the cloud management gateway connection point at the moment, neither the distribution fallback. We're gonna discuss when we get to our series. Okay, let's get back to our notepad file here. Uh, spend a few minutes on high availability. For example, like if you have the multiple clients, uh, if you are sorry, if you have like more than the limit of the clients, this is where you need more than one MPs or the DPs over there. And another reason to have more than one MP is to um, make sure that you have the high availability. For example, even if you have a less than 25,000 clients and you have the proper bind, bind, boundary group set up, and then you can set up in a way that if one MP is down, the, the client can fall back to the other MP automatically. So that's another reason to have more than one MPs to establish high availability. Same formula goes for the distribution points up and SMS providers. Site database, uh, high availability can be accomplished in many ways. For example, you can have always on SQL, behind the load balancers, um, you can have a clustering on this in on SQL server, things like that. I'm not a SQL expert, but those are the few options in my mind you can ask uh, your SQL administrator in your org, they can discuss multiple high availability option for the SQL. Okay, so this is the fun part. So build your self-hosted lab environment. Um, so this is kind of like a pre, um, you know, like a predefined lab available um, at Microsoft website if you if you don't want to create anything, everything from the scratch, you can just simply go to this. Let me one second. Here, this is the link here. Let me go back one step back. It's called Microsoft Windows and Office 365 Deployment Lab Kits. I'm gonna put it in the description anyway. So if you choose to go with the latest version, which is Windows 11, click on that. I will give you the big zip file. You download the zip file and, and what it comes with here. So Windows 11 Enterprise, it comes with the latest version of SCCM, Windows Deployment Kit 11, Server 2022. That's also latest, everything is latest. So, and the lab is also designed for integration with the subscription I was talking about. So let me put it in my notes as well. All right, let's get back to lab over there. So when you download this, it will, I believe, I never use this one, but I try once. Uh, it's kind of like give you the executable file type of thing and, and then it will ask you for your virtual network interface card. And when you provide the appropriate information, it's gonna automatically provision your VMs in your environment and you're good to go. Uh, prerequisites here. So you have to have a Hyper-V role installing your virtual environment, 64-bit Windows edition. Uh, it can be Windows 11 or Windows Server 2016. With, uh, 
um, you must have administrative rights on that Hyper-V box. And 150 GB of free space is a minimum. 300 is recommended. I would definitely recommend 300 here um, because SCCM itself takes a lot of disk. Um, I, if you have high ops, that's good. Uh, I wouldn't recommend 16 gig for this lab series because we will be deploying a bunch of VMs. So, and I definitely would recommend 32 or more because SCCM itself is gonna take eight to 10 gig and Hyper-V will take like around like four to six gig uh, to function properly. So it's already like 16 gig here. So if you go with 16 gig, then you won't have any more VMs to provision. High-end processor for faster processing. So basically if you have a Windows 10 VM running and your processor support, uh, the virtualization technology, then you can enable this lab or provision this lab on your home computer as well. If you ask me personally what you should do, I would highly recommend you to do not go through this lab, rather create your own lab from the scratch. I didn't do it through this lab, I created my own lab, so you 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 know how technology works, you know how to implement as, uh, Active Directory, DNS, things like that. So it's a fun part and you will have a, you will enjoy, trust me, deploying each server and technology by yourself. And and when you go to the SCCM, it will take you through the lot of steps and you will learn more. Okay, what's next? So we discussed prerequisites, MEMCM high level, build your own lab. Okay, let's go through my lab. So now um, let's go through my lab here. So I have the lab set up, which is on Azure, and I am actually using the nested virtualization because um, obviously it's a cloud. I can't have my physical box over there. But um, what I'm doing is I'm using a very powerful VM and made it as a Hyper-V. So basically VM itself is acting as a Hyper-V and within this VM, I'm provisioning more VMs. So that's called nested virtualization here. I have a bunch of VMs installed for cloud and uh, I'm sorry, a bunch of VM installed in this Hyper-V and this Hyper-V, if I show you real quick, um, the specs specification for this Hyper-V, so I'm using 64 gig um, system type 64 and I'm using server 2019 data center. And um, I think 64 gig is more than enough for what we're doing here. Uh, but if you have 32, we can you can still manage with 32. I have uh, in the storage, I have two devices, the C and the D. I'm keeping all my VMs in the D so I can just complete. So it does not interfere with the, my Windows directories and I can just kill them whenever I don't need them. Okay. Uh, that was about my lab, so I provisioned a bunch of VMs here on my lab here. As you can see, I have the domain controller. So this Hyper-V itself is a domain controller. So if I show you here, I have, um, I have four local domains. Uh, the one forest, okay, which is azurelabacademy.com. Sorry, azurecloud.local here. So I'm using azurecloud.com.local, that's my local domain. And I have more, I have four domains. Um, you don't need all four domains, you just need a one cheap domain for this lab. Or even if you don't have a domain, that's okay. You can use dot on microsoft.com. And, um, uh, but you need a local forest and domain. That's a master requirement. So, so I have four domains verified on Azure and those, are actually the same domains I added under domain interest. So if I show you how to add that, let me first start with Azure. And let me just discuss this real quick here. So four domains and every domain has a hierarchy, for example, devices, groups, um, different set of devices, servers, service accounts, and users. So I have some demo users created here. It's nice to have demo users ready ahead of time while you are testing things. Uh, so that's my domain controller. That's also the DNS server as well. So this is my DNS server. And this is also the Azure AD Connect. 
so if I if you're not familiar with Azure AD Connect this is the time to go with Azure AD Connect but I'm using I think the latest version of Azure AD Connect what I am doing here is I am syncing my on-premises identities over to the cloud this is my on-premises domain Azure cloud.local and it's being synced with my Azure Active Directory cool so that's Azure AD Connect piece. This server is also acting as a PKI server. So uh, this is the PKI. The last topic is a PKI, so I'm just going to skip through it right now, and I'll get back to this topic real quick. Um, so that's Azure AD Connect. If you let me see if I can get the documentation on Azure AD Connect to show you real quick how to here. So you just have to, once you have the on-premises AD set up, you go through the documentation. I would use, uh, instead of using custom setting, you can go with the customize option, that's better. And uh, use your global admin credentials. Global admin credentials generally exist in, in your Azure tenant. Once you sign up with the, with the lab or whatever the tenant you have, make a dedicated global admin and use those credentials here. Uh, and when you spin up your on-premises AD, it comes with the enterprise admin as well. So use the enterprise admin credentials here. So once you define all those uh, required credentials, it's gonna pick up your existing domains. The important thing is, for example, I was talking about, I have an on-premises domain, which is Azure cloud.local. Dot .local won't, won't be identified and verified by this setup because the requirement is the domain must be internet routable domain for example it must be .com .org something like that so if you have a domain already verified so if i show you here let me take you my azure ad tenant okay so i have a bunch of domains verified this one is federated with adfs but what are we going to work with the azure lab academy.com so this is the one azure lab academy.com what i did i added so you don't you won't see azure cloud.local here because the azure won't be able to verify because that's not a public domain so once you have the public domain even if you don't have you can use with azure lab academy.onmicrosoft.com and you can add the same domain in your on premises but in my case i just bought some inexpensive domains for my testing here so for example this one azure lab academy.com if i go like domain and trust and if i show you the properties here so i added all these suffix here if i add all these suffix under the domain and trust that means my user can use the upn for these domains for example if i pick up one of this user if i go to account it will populate all the UPNs here. So you see that this is the local domain, which I'm not using, I'm using the Azure Lab Academy now because I wanted to do, because I'm use, synchronizing to the UPN on Azure and I want to make sure it comes with the correct UPN. If you go with the dot local, it's not gonna recognize on Azure Active Directory and as a result, you will get like on Microsoft.com. That's not a good user experience, but for your lab testing, I think it's fine. So that's one thing I wanted to show you here, the domains addition in Azure Domain uh, and Trust. And so get back to that article. So once you have domains verified and this automatic, this uh, Azure AD Connect uh, wizard will automatically identify, yes, you have the, internet routable domain and it will pick up and then you can just continue without matching all upn suffixes if and select that option and hit next 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 and then your identities will be synchronized initial sync will happen immediately after you hit install but delta sync happens every 30 minutes so if i show you my synchronization so let's get back to here let's see when the last thing happened so the last thing happened just right away few minutes ago um like 20 or so minutes ago and then it was able to export so i think it's thing happening right now as well and the best way to verify that you go to portal dot let me start over so portal.azure.com azure active directory 
and Azure AD Connect. You can see like the status enable, password hash sync enable, blah, blah, blah. So it will give you some um, idea here that you have the Azure AD Connect enabled. Another way is to make sure your on-premises domain and identities are being synchronized. So if I go to all users in Azure Active Directory, uh, you see that the directory sync says yes, that means this user source of authority is on-premises. If it says no, that means the source of authority is the cloud. So that's one way to check. I am also syncing my devices as well. So when we get to the devices section, I will show you what needs to be done to enable core management and everything. So um, this is my join type, like Azure AD join, Azure AD registered, hybrid Azure AD registered. So I have all three types of devices provision in my lab, but I will show you how to do it in your lab as well. And these devices are, for example, this hybrid Azure AD joint device is coming from the on-premises. It's all, the magic is all happening because of the Azure AD Connect. So this is a sync engine. Um, from that, so that was the on-premises side of things. So let me quickly discuss the Azure side. So I have the Azure Active Directory tenant. So I have a, I have M365 license so that covers pretty much everything. So I have Intune tenant and Azure AD tenant as well. So that's pretty much required. And I, like I said, I verified a bunch of domains for your, for the testing. So I can synchronize or, or I can synchronize the users on that domain and test it accordingly. You need to be a global admin in your test tenant and it's nice to have different set of accounts as well for example like some cloud accounts and some admin privilege account for example intune admin if you test conditional access type of thing so it will be best to have the other admin accounts present on azure active directory so that, that was about my lab the last piece here i wanted to discuss is the pkcs so for sccm in general um you need required you need four different templates for SCCM. Um, the web server templates, I just made a table here, uh, and two with the private key and two without private key. So web server is like a general template for any classic web server required. And um, web server with exportable private key, that's generally required for enrolling a new web server for another machine that can't do themselves. For example, if the machine cannot enroll into the certificate with a private key by soft or request directly from the PKI. That's why you need the web server with exportable private key. Workstation authentication with exportable private key for securing MPD, PCMG, so that's, that's also required. And workstation authentication is like for HTTPS only configuration. Uh, so in MECM, there are three types of um, communication being offered. One is simple HTTP that's not secure and no PKI, nothing is required for that. The other is enhanced HTTPS. So enhanced HTTPS is basically uh, the way to uh, establish a secure communication uh, through the certificate, but the certificate is self-signed certificate and it's generated by configman itself. So, if for some reason you can have a fully provisioned PKI in your environment, they can go with the enhanced HTTPS, but there are some limitations as well. But at the end of the day, that's secure, but not as secure as the HTTPS. Uh, the last one and the highly secure and the recommended one is HTTPS. For that to establish, you need a fully provisioned PKI in your environment. So I'm gonna quickly go over the templates and I'm gonna show you all three options in SCCM server. And then we're gonna wrap up this session today. Uh, so let me go to, uh, let's just, let's go with the PKI first. So I have the PKI here. Open the PKI. Okay, so that's my PKI. Um, I go to certificate template manage. So I have um, one, two, three, four. So these four templates 
I was talking about the two with the private key and two without the private key and two for the server and two for the clients. So basically it is a duplicate for a web server. So this is the web server, like a default template. You can just simply duplicate the web server template and create this server. Other two templates are duplicate from the workstation authenticate template. So you can just create a duplicate from the workstation authentication template. So let's quickly discuss all four templates real quick. So let's start with the web server without private key. So web server without private key, if you look at my uh, configuration, I give a template name here, SCCM web server, validity two period, renewable period six weeks. You can just go with your requirement. Another thing under the compatibility that this is the settings, if you're looking at a request handling, signature and encryption only, and allow private key to be exported is unchecked. So that's very important when you work on without private key template, make sure this is unchecked. Another thing is subject name. So I am actually going with the DNS name for this template. So make sure your DNS name is selected and the DNS name is checked. And the important thing in all four template, which is common, are two things. I think it's the subject name and the security. So under the security, you can, you need to make sure your domain computers um, are assigned to read and enroll permissions. So that's very much. Uh, let's discuss the uh, same template with the private key, exact same settings. The only difference is um, the request handling. So in the request handling, the private key is ex to be exported is checked. And, and obviously the security is the same as well because we look at domain controller, read and enroll is checked. Um, let's discuss the workstation template, exact same template, um, request handling is signature and encryption, allow private key to be exported is unchecked because this is a without private key and subject name is DNS set, set to DNS and the request handling signature and encryption and the last piece security it's the same thing domain controllers read and enroll and another one is the workstation with the private key exact same but the only difference is under the request handling allow private key to be exported okay security if i show you here domain computers it's the same thing so those are the four templates. Once you create them, make sure you publish those templates in the PKI, and then you're good to go from the PKI side for SCCM. Uh, let's hop back on to the SCCM server itself and discuss all three options. So I have my SCCM server here. Let me... Okay, so if I show you real quick, my CCM is 2111, which is the latest one. I just installed it for my lab purposes. Um, and I wanted to show you here under administration, you go to administration and the sites. And when you click on, I think it's the properties and communication and security. So I should be using HTTPS only right now because my PKI is set up. So I don't need an enhanced HTTP, but currently the way I'm set up is the enhanced HTTPS. So this option use config manager, manager configuration manager generated certificate for HTTP site system. So that's the option called enhanced HTTP or HTTP. So if you don't use this option, it's gonna go on HTTP by default. If you check this box, it's going to do the enhance HTTP. Uh, this option is recommended HTTPS only. I have to make sure I am using HTTPS only because I have a PKI setup, so I, it shouldn't be breaking anything. I have my root certificate as well. I'm not going to go deeper into this, but these are the three options. HTTPS first, second HTTP, and if you check this box, HTT enhance HTTPS. If you enable enhanced HTTPS, you can see uh, 
you can see the certificate two certificate generated by SCCM server and that's they're going to live under cert lm.msc under the computer account person you will see i think they're i forgot the name i think they're sms role or something like that so that's pretty much it for today guys um i i i'm hoping that um you're gonna have your lab set up and i'm very excited to continue uh uploading the videos on this series and side by side i'll be working on different topics as well the intention is to share my knowledge with others and to make sure you are familiar with the technology thank you